it's so intense and it's so personal. How do you how do you talk about something that was 40 years ago? Music is such an important part of my life, my creative life, my personal life. I was aware of the music, and uh, very often I'd go to a concert if I could. I only saw, I think, Dylan in concert once or twice, maybe. That's it, in all these years. My concentration was on cinema. Cinema music, cinema literature, cinema. The film that stuck in my mind, though, was something about um, this film made in 59, I think, Jazz on a Summer's Day. Rock and roll was, there was doo-wop, there were other things, but somehow it was all popular music. It was captured in a way that I don't think has ever been equaled. The key was staying on the performer, because all the beauty and the magic and that, that element of the music that transcends you know, the situation comes from the performer. I was drawn into the uh, that, uh, that music world, so to speak, with The Last Waltz. It's as if it seems to me that after certain performance, certain songs, especially as the concert moves on and they warm up, it's like being around in a prize fight, and they all got through it. They all got through it. Okay, take a break. Round five, you know, <laughs> and they go back in, and then they soar, they take off, and I, let's capture that. Let's capture the essence of who they, of that beauty of their, um, of their art. It's like a wild spiritual experience. <laughs> <laughs> when it's really cooking, you know. So in a sense, the footage that we were able to utilize in, in Rolling Thunder is shot by some incredible director cameramen, Dave Myers, uh, Howard Alk, and a few others. Here, the Rolling Thunder review, which I didn't know much about, but I sensed that there was a negative response to this tour. But I didn't quite understand it. People always complaining about something uh, Dylan did. Always. Like, you know, anything. The footage that I saw that was captured from stage, on the stage, was remarkable, I thought. But what's the story? What are we telling? What, what is it about? David brought over the assembly of, of this film, and I remember watching it, and uh, it was in the afternoon, and then sunset came down by the end as the film was ending. It was very beautiful. But I looked at him and said, I don't know, it's conventional. Now, I'm not saying take something that's quote, conventional, unquote, and distort it just for the sake of, sake of distorting it. So what's it really about? What do I care where they went? I mean, you could have that, yeah, you could, you could imply it. What keeps it together, in that sense, this creative energy? He always talked about the commedia dell'arte, the traveling uh, players. When it all else, all else fails, that's what happens. Person gets up, tells a story, and sings. There's a mythology that grows up about it, so let's embrace the mythology. This is not legend, this is a kind of myth, kind of supposed to explore something that is timeless about us as human beings. There's one shot of a young woman crying after the concert. To have something that touching, that, that moves you so much, that was real at that time. It's nothing to, to uh, ignore that if something could move us, make us think, make us feel before you think even, that should, that's something that has to be preserved and has to be captured and be reminded. Audiences today have to be reminded of what that's possible. And they say, well, directors make, create magic. Well, not really, I mean, it's more than that. I don't see it as magic as directing films. I see that as uh, the nature of film. There's an element to the tour that has a sense of fun to it. It's doing something to the audience, uh, opening their minds so that they don't expect the normal thing, um, the, the conventional. Uh, it, it, you, don't, you don't make it predictable. 